What's uh, up, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about the hydraulic ram that's in our steering system and how it works and what's inside it. The clips that you're going to be seeing were actually supposed to be in episode 3 of the steering series, but that video was already starting to get long, and to fit all these clips in there, I would have had to cut them up a bunch and leave out a bunch of information. So I decided that it would be best to make it into its own video. So that's what we're doing here. I also just want to say, please leave some feedback down below. That helps us make the videos better. Let's us know what you like and don't like. And if you are liking them, drop a like down there. And with that, let's just hop into the footage. We just got to the point where we're going to need to add our internal spacer into the RAM. That way it maxes out at the same point that the box and the spindles are stopping. So we got a internal spacer from how that we're going to put in the ram and we also have a new piston seal to put in there as well so christian's getting ready to pull this thing apart this should be interesting because i have never seen into a ram before and i don't have much knowledge about shocks in general and this is pretty similar to a normal fox shock so christian's tearing into it and we're going to see what's inside this thing just like jake was saying these rams are very similar to a fox shock so the first thing that you need to do to take these off is going to be get the dust cap off just like a normal just 2.0 fox shock so there's a little set screw and then you have your pin wrench tool something just like this to be able to get the the top cap off or the dust cap off and then once that's up you'll have your seal head right here which is just like a normal shock and then there's just a little snap ring to hold it in so do you have to press this down in order to get that snap ring out yeah so the seal head typically will sit up like this part right here will sit up flush with the rest of the body but to be able to get to that snap ring, you have to push the seal head down a little bit. And the way to do that is to unthread your dust cap a little bit, but leave enough threads on there to where if you do have to tap it with a hammer or like a mallet or something, you're not screwing up the threads on the seal head right here that this dust cap actually screw onto. Because if it's just loose and it's sitting like that and you go and hit it, you're gonna mess up the thread, the first couple threads on the seal head and you're never gonna get this dust cap back on. So you wanna make sure it's threaded a little bit so you can get in there and tap it with a mallet on the dust cap to get that seal head to sit down. And it all depends on how long the shock has been sitting because the seal can either dry out and get stuck to the body and that makes it a lot harder. So you might have to use a little bit more force than normal. So just to clarify, um, so this set screw on the dust cap is It goes connected. into this. Okay. Yeah, so the you can see right here. So there's, there's a little mark right there on the inside where the, the mm -hmm. set screw sits. Mm -hmm. And all the set screw is doing is just making sure this dust cap doesn't come loose, like back itself back out. Yep and then the shock starts to get all messed up. So, And then that snap ring in there is just keeping this from flying out. Yeah, this, that snap ring is literally holding this entire thing together. So all the, all the pressure through this ram or a normal shock, whatever pressure your shock is seeing on the vehicle, that snap ring is literally holding the entire thing in. So That's kind of crazy. Yeah, okay. it's kind of scary. So once you have that out, do you already have the snap ring out? Or no, it's okay, right so here. That's it right there. So the snap ring, you just use a pick to get this out and you want to make sure you're not scratching any of the surfaces with the pick because if you scratch any surface, then that can mean a seal can get caught on the, the nick that you made. And, and it leak too? It, yeah, it'll make, if you cut the seal, if it's big enough to cut the seal, you can start making your ram or your shock, whatever you're working on, it can start leaking. So now can this whole, the whole shaft and everything attached to it come out? Yes. So this right here, handy dandy little set of yeah, a little, little plaid of, undies, dude. Instead of pants. All right. Um, basically, you just to get this out, all you want to do, once the snap ring is out, this isn't full of fluid, obviously, because it's it's got ports in it and it's going to be filled later. But for a shock, you want to make sure when you're pulling this apart, you don't spill a bunch of oil. But for this, it doesn't really matter. But it literally just comes right out with a little bit of, a little bit of elbow grease, just like that. So this is quite a bit different than a normal like a normal shock setup. So you do still have your seal head, but it looks like it's been taken down, like someone machined it down a little bit um, compared to a normal like 2.0 seal head. And then your piston doesn't even have, it doesn't have any rebound or compression ports at all. So it's it's literally just a dead head. Like the fluid will hit this side of the piston and, just and push it, it yeah. and then it'll hit this side of the piston and push it. So that's literally all it's doing. There's no flow going through this at all. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. I've just not, I've never looked at and inside so of one of these. Is this just a like a seal? Like what's the point of this guy right here? So this right here is making sure when the shock no is completely comes out. Well, that it's it's got the seal on it, so it's it's making sure nothing gets out of the shock, but it's also 
making sure when this is all together, you can see the stack height of this. So you can mm. see, like if this was fully extended, it'd be sitting like this inside of the shock. Imagine if you didn't have this seal head sitting here. Yeah, you'd only have, you'd, well, you'd only have this amount of, this amount of distance inside of the shock holding it together. So you have all your shafts sticking out mm -hmm. and you only have this much holding it in. True. So if something binds up, if you don't have a bunch of, of, of stuff inside of the body holding it nice and straight, this can get bound up if it's too small and you're gonna start screwing stuff up. Yeah, it'll let it walk. Yes. It? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna be adding the spacer in yeah, between. Yeah, so the spacer two. will go literally right in here in between the seal head and the piston. And that's just gonna limit how far the shaft's gonna be able to come out of this thing, which is exactly what we need uh, to go along with this. Got one single little nut. I'm curious how this, if this is all one piece or if it's got like spaces or something. Got one washer, it is all one piece. Hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bro, like, careful with that piece of equipment. Well, I was trying to pull it apart. Um, so yeah, all we need to do this. Where's that spacer at? Uh, probably under. Your, cover it. Probably under your pants. Yeah. <laughs> so this will end up going Bam. literally just like that, and then you have your washer. This is just spacing everything off, so you have enough space here. Sit like that. And then you put your nut back on. You got make sure you lock tight it. Yep. And then this nut. Stable. For shocks, yeah, for shocks, it's very specific on what this nut gets torqued to, and just depending on the diameter of the shock, you're gonna torque this nut down to a different spec. But for this 2.0, this nut right here will get torqued to 35 foot pounds. Bam! Perfect. Check that. So 35 foot pounds on this. And then what I'm gonna do, he gave us a couple extra seals and a wear band and stuff in here just to replace this. I don't know if he thought that it didn't have it or what, but the wear band looks perfectly fine. I'm not gonna replace the wear band right now because all the coating is still on here. You can see, I was telling my brother, there's a gold coating you can kind of see on the top right there. Once this wear band starts showing gold or there's like a cut through it somewhere and it's showing gold, you might want to replace it. But since this thing is literally brand new, I'm gonna leave that on there as well as the seal behind it right here, this white one. There's a seal right behind that wear band. I'm gonna leave that in there as well. But these two outside um, main seals right here, I'm going to replace just because we did dry cycle this a bunch of times on the truck. So just in case it did pinch the seal somewhere when we were doing that, cause it was kind of stiff. Um, I don't want this thing to leak right now, like right out of the gate, that would suck. So we're gonna replace both of those just as a precaution and then grease them up real good with our uh, assembly grease and then put this thing back together. So just got all the seals replaced and got them nice and lubed up with some uh, grease. What we're gonna do now is uh, get everything set in here. What you wanna do, and this is a good idea for any shock, especially a bypass or anything where a port is gonna be cycling past where your piston's gonna be going. Um, you wanna clock the opening on your wear band away from wherever there's gonna be a port. So like obviously on this ram, we have two ports right here. So what I'm gonna do is clock this wear band. And I know this on the truck is gonna be sitting at a 90 degree angle compared to the other mounting point on the other side. So I'm gonna set all this up exactly how it's gonna be when it's on the vehicle. And I'm gonna clock this, this opening on the, on the wear band 90 degrees to these ports. That way it's not catching on the ports when it's that, cycling. Uh, that wear band can twist in there though, right? No. It won't spin? It'll, the only time it'll spin is if you're, if you're turning this. So like if you don't line this up exactly where you want it to be right now, and you you clock this and you, you're like, oh crap, I gotta turn this. Oh, cause it's, it's gonna move it's everything. It's clamped down with the bolt that holds exactly. it in place, okay. So everything goes in. You gotta get those O-rings passed. Typically, it's kind of weird doing this without any oil in, the, in this thing, but you just need to get all these uh, seals past that snap ring groove and it's gonna be kind of difficult because it gets, once it gets into the shock, it sets into that snap ring groove and then you gotta push it past it so it takes a little bit of force, just like that. Get that second one, go down in there. There we go. 
pull that back up and it and typically cool. typically on a normal shock right now before you put your snap ring in you go in here and clean up all the oil that's sitting down inside of here from pushing it down but since there's nothing in here obviously we're going to go ahead get that snap ring put in here take a pick make sure it's getting sat in that groove nicely and a good tip is always spin the snap ring inside of the groove just to make sure it's seated in there nice and nice and tight go ahead <laughs> this thing is tight so you go ahead and get that up what you need to do next is just go ahead and tighten down your dust cap this thing doesn't need to be super super tight but just snug just like that and then you're so will that screw. automatically line up with that like will the set screw automatically line up with where it was before no so every time you take this apart like that it's going to clock into a different position because you're tightening over where it was tightened before because just with everything expanding mm -hmm. it's going to every time you tighten this now just like an an fitting or anything like that every time you tighten it you're over tightening it every other time you do it every okay. time you tighten it it's going past where it was going before so it's going to be in a little bit different spot but it doesn't matter as long as this set screw is touching that seal head and locking it in you're good I hope you guys enjoyed those clips and learned something and got an understanding of how this hydraulic ram is working. As of now, we are still waiting on literally one fitting to finish up the steering system, but that should be coming shortly. But if you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.